A fiery horse with the speed of light, the cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver. The Lone Ranger. Faithful Indian companion Tonto, the masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. The stories of his strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness have come down to us through the generations. And nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundery hoof beats of a great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! Faster, boy, faster! Daniel, the 14-year-old boy who had proved to be his nephew, was a source of great satisfaction to the Lone Ranger. He admired Dan's quick thinking, courage, and eagerness to learn. Consequently, the three horsemen were now inseparable. The Lone Ranger, Tonto, and Dan riding the wild trails of the high border country. They made camp a short distance from the small mining town of Spearhead. Tonto and Dan had visited the post office to pick up a letter addressed to the Lone Ranger. That errand accomplished, they walked toward the hitch rack where their horses were waiting. As they passed the Rainbow Cafe, something in the window caught Dan's eye. Oh, wait a minute, Tonto. Look, here in the window. I've never seen such a big collection of holsters and gun belts. Golly, look at them. Uh... This Rainbow Cafe, man who own this place, buy and sell plenty gun belts all time. Look at that one over in the corner, the one with the fancy beadwork on it. Oh, that look like Indian make it. That plenty good belt. Gee, I'd like to have a belt like that. Wonder how much it is. Mm, Tonto not know. Well, I've got almost six dollars. Let's go and see if that'll buy it. Ah. What'll it be, Jids? Thirsty or hungry? Oh, neither one. You've got a lot of gun belts in the window. Are they for sale? Oh, sure, Sonny. It's the finest collection of hardware harness in the whole Northwest. Some of them used and some brand new. Well, how much are they? Oh, different prices. You asking about any one special? Well, there's a belt and holster hanging over on the right side. There, that one right there, with the beadwork on it. Oh, you mean this one? Yeah. Yeah, this is one of the fanciest rigs in the layout. Not brand new. In fact, it's second hand, but it's a real bargain. Oh, well, how much? Fifteen dollars. Oh. Well, I didn't think it would be that much. Well, this is a fine piece of leather, son. Look at that beadwork. Somebody put in a lot of hours making this. Oh, yeah, I like it, but the price is too high. Well, not for this rig. There's quite a history behind it. Is that so? Son, this outfit used to belong to Trigger Trenton, one of the toughest outlaws who ever thumbed the hammer of a forty-five. Trigger Trenton? Well, he's dead, isn't he? Yeah, might as well be. He's doing life in the territorial prison. Yes, sir, this holster and belt used to belong to Trigger. Well, even so, the price is still more than I want to spend. I really don't want the whole thing anyway. I don't carry a gun. The part I'm interested in is a belt. Only want the belt, eh? Well, maybe we can make a deal. Oh, I'll give you $6 for it, cash. Sold. 
You speak right up, son. That's the way I like to do business. Oh, here's your money. And here's your belt. Anything else? No, that's all. Come on, Tano. Uh-huh. Gee, this is a fine belt. Oh, you like it? Steady, boy. It's the best one I ever owned. You think it really used to belong to Trigger Trenton? Oh, me not know. Sometimes man who want to sell tell plenty big lie. Oh, I don't care who used <laughs> to own it. It's mine now. Get up, boy. Get him up, scout. Hold, 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 Strange. Bad news? Not exactly. It's from the warden of the territorial prison. He's a friend of mine. Territorial prison? Where's that? Many miles east of here, Dan. I'll have to start right away. Well, why are we going there? We aren't going. I'll ride alone. You and Tonto wait for me here. Oh, but I thought it's a I... question of time. One man rides faster than three. Here, Silver. Here, I'll read you this letter from the warden. That explains it. He says, Convict Flint Crawford is near death. He wants to see you. Claims he has vital information to get off his conscience. Maybe something about the disappearance of money from that express robbery five years ago. I suggest you come as soon as possible. Well, what's it all mean? Well, Dan, it all goes back about five years. Toto and I were able to help a sheriff trap an outlaw who had just completed a $50,000 express robbery. Remember that, Toto? Ah. Uh-huh. The outlaw was captured all right. The money has never been found. Oh, then this Flint Crawford the warden has written about is... that outlaw. He received a life sentence. Now, he's evidently ill and near death. Well, you think he's going to tell you where the money is? Steady, Silver. Steady. I don't know, Dan. At the time of his capture, he swore he'd kill me. But sometimes crooks change their minds, especially in prison. Well, when will you be back? It shouldn't take me over four or five days at the most. Now, this is a good camp here. Oh, we'll be all right. Uh, Dan Tonto, get along plenty fine. Good. I'll see you both later. Adios. Come on, Silver. Two days later, when the Lone Ranger arrived at the territorial prison, the warden took him directly to the cell block that housed the dying convict named Flint Crawford. As they reached an inner door, the warden called to a trusty who seemed to be waiting for them. Warren. Tom Warren. Yes, sir. Take this man to Flint Crawford's cell. Yes, sir. I'll wait for you in the office. Sir Crawford wants to talk to you alone. Thanks, warden. And don't worry about your guide here. He's Tom Warren, one of my trustees. I'm sure we'll get along. Yes, sir. I'll take you to Flint's cell. Just follow me. Flint. Yes? There's a masked man here to see you. Warden said to bring him in. Oh, yes. Thanks, Tom. I'll wait here in the hall. Well, Crawford, I've come a long way in answer to your request. (coughs) I don't think you got here any too soon. I'm just about to cash in my chips. The warden said you wanted to see me about something special. Yes. I've been doing a lot of thinking since I've been in here. Most men do. I was quite an odd hoot before the law caught up with me. It was really you who finally nailed me. It was bound to happen sometime. (laughs) Now I'm going to die. They wanted to tell you I don't hold any grudges. I'm glad to hear it. There's something else. Remember that gold from the express robbery? Nobody's ever found it, have they? Not that I know of. I knew they wouldn't. Not where I've got it hid. But I can't take it with me, so I'm going to tell you where it is. The express company will be very grateful. <laughs> Listen. Bend over close. I can't talk loud, because one of the Ketch gang might hear me. You mean Tom and Floyd Ketch? I, uh, I thought they were outlaw friends of yours. They used to be. Before that last job, then they double-crossed me, so I took the money and lit out. That was just before you caught me. I understand. There's no danger they catch brothers overhearing you here. 
I ain't so sure of that. I think one of them is doing time in here under another name. Have you ever seen him? No. Might have been flat in my back here in this cell. He could be here and I'd never see him. What did you want to tell me about the money? Well, it's like this. I don't hate you anymore. And I want it to be you who delivers the gold back to its rightful owner. Where is it? <laughs> I can't talk much. I'm getting weak. Just before you nailed me, I had a gun belt in the holster that used to belong to Trigger Tread. Well, about the gold, I wrote it all out. Two pieces of paper. Put one of them in the belt, one in the holster. Get that outfit. You'll find the whole story. Where is this gun belt now? I sold it to Leif Kelly. He runs a cafe in Spearhead. Yes? I figured nobody had ever traced it that way. Directions to the gold's hiding place are written on two pieces of paper. And they're in the gun belt and holster that used to belong to Trigger Trenton. <laughs> That's right. I'll find it. You'll go after it personally? Yes. Thanks. It's all I wanted to know. Now I can die without worrying. I wonder what that is. Sounds like a break. Gordon, what's wrong? The prisoner just went over the wall. I'm sending a posse right out. The middle of the day is an odd time for prison break. Which convict was it, do you know? Well, that's the worst part. It's the trustee who brought you in here. Trustee? You mean Tom Warren? Yes, but I've discovered something else. He was serving time here under an alias. His real name was Tom Ketch. Ketch? Did you say Tom Ketch? Yes. Did you know who he was? No, but I know why he made the break. You heard what I told the Lone Ranger. He's going after that gold. So am I. <laughs> What's this all about? I'll tell you later, Warden. I hope you get there first. Honest, I do. <laughs> well, that's the end of Flint Crawford. He's dead. Yes, Warden. But he told me how to find the express company's gold, and I'm going after it. The Lone Ranger rode day and night to reach Spearhead in as short a time as possible. It was midnight of the second day before he arrived at the camp where Tonto and Dan were waiting. He told them what had happened at the territorial prison and gave Dan definite instructions. Sometime later, a grim-faced rider dressed in the gray denim of a prisoner flung himself from the back of an exhausted horse and knocked at the rear door of the Rainbow Cafe. Kitch! Tom Ketch, Shut up. You... I thought you were in Never prison. mind what you thought. I'm in a hurry. Listen, someplace among that leather junk you've got in the window there is a belt and holster that used to belong to Trigger Trenton. Uh, not anymore. What do you mean? Well, the holster's there, but I sold the belt. Sold it? Sold it to a kid about four days ago. Why? That holster and belt have got the answer to where Flint Crawford hid that express money. $50,000. Yeah? Hurry up. Go in there and get me that holster. Tell me where I can find the kid who has a belt. But I don't, don't know. Don't argue. Hurry. Split the money 50 50. Hey, wait here. So Crawford thought he was turning it all over to that master hombre. <laughs> well. Well? Here's the holster, Tom. I had to sneak it out real fast. What do you mean? This is your place, ain't it? Well, yeah, but I didn't want to act suspicious. About what? The kid that bought the belt. He's standing out there right now. Wants to buy this holster to match it. What? Here, you're packing a gun. Give it to me. What do you want it for? Give me that gun. Now, open that door. Not far. Just enough so I can get a line on that kid. Well, Tom, you can't do that. The cafe's full of people. What do I care? I'll blast the kid and you grab the belt off of him. Tom, I can't. Open that door. Uh, which one is he? Up there in front. Standing by that engine. All right. I'll throw a slug into his back. <laughs> The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
continue our story. The bullet from the gun of Tom Ketch missed Dan by a fraction of an inch. The killer was about to fire again, but the first shot had thrown the crowded cafe into a panic, and in the confusion, Tonto signaled to Dan. Dan! Say, I think that shot was aimed at Come, me. Come, we leave plenty fast. Quick, boss is over here. Steady, boy. There must be some reason for no, shooting. No talk. Right, tell Lone Ranger. Get up, Get him boy. Up, scout. Missed him. Who is that kid? Do you know? I never saw him until four days ago when he walked in here and bought that belt. I'll find him. It won't take long. So I've had the way to find fifty thousand dollars in gold all this time. Laying in the window in that old belt and holster. Yeah. And we're the only two that know about it? Are you sure? Crawford knew. He's dead by now. Well, that leaves just you and me. Twenty five thousand apiece. No. You're wrong, Leif. I've been thinking it over. It doesn't leave you and me. It just leaves me. No. No, Tom, no. No, don't, Tom, no, don't. Now, if I can find that kid, it's all mine. Could you see who was doing the shooting? No. We not see Plenty people in cafe. When we first went in, the man that sold me my belt took a holster out of the window and went in the back room. Was it the beaded holster we're looking for? Oh, I couldn't tell him who so fast. The first thing we'll do is look into that back room at the Rainbow Cafe. Come on, Silver. Get up, Come boy. Count. There's a door over there. Come on. Uh. Whoever shot at me has the holster. It's no good without the belt. That's a dangerous part of it. Quiet. Well, I'll try this door. This must be the back room. Oh, you can hear the people in the cafe. Uh, Wait. I'll light a match. Oh, there's nothing here. Look. Oh, man on the floor. He's been shot. Oh, it's the man who sold me my belt. And he isn't the one who tried to kill you, Dan. You're right. The first one of the moves gets just what Leif gets. Oh, it's... A man I met at the prison, Dan. His name is Ketch. Tom Ketch. Before that match burns out, reach over and light the lamp. Good idea. What? Match, man. So you found the kid with the belt, huh? We've known each other for quite a while. I'm giving you just three counts to hand it over. One. Two. Give him the belt, Dan. Give him the belt? There's nothing in it worth risking your life for. Oh, but hand I... it over. Here. <clears throat> Now you're starting to get smart. Stand where you are. Don't move. Any of you. Oh, now he's got them both. The belt and the holster. We follow Crook. Yes, Toto. That's as soon as we can. Hey, Leif. The men in the cafe. Leif! Leif! Quick, you and Toto get to the horses. I'll handle this. Leif, what's wrong? Open up! Leif! Shot. Masked man, you killed him. Oh, wait a minute. I didn't kill this man. It's cold-blooded murder. Arrest him, Sheriff. Stranger, you better... Keep your guns in leather. I'll shoot the first man that draws. Now, listen, all of you. Leif Keller was dead when I came through the back door a few minutes ago. I didn't kill him. He's lying. Do your duty, Sheriff. But I know who did kill him. And I'm going after that man. Watch out, Sheriff. He's edging toward the door. You better not try it, I can't get away while the lamp's burning. I'll try it in the dark. <laughs> Got away, Sheriff. Come on, men. Saddle your horses. We'll trail that critter. Knowing that Tom Ketch would follow the directions of the note hidden in the belt, the Lone Ranger, Tonto, and Dan headed straight for Sunburst Basin. It was really a broad hollow of volcanic rock that nestled at the base of high mountain peaks. Under the bright rays of the morning sun, each separate rock formation sparkled and shone like a giant jewel. Although the hollow was nothing but wasteland, it was in truth sunburst basin. The masked man, Tonto, and Dan reined up their horses sharply at the edge of a winding trail. Oh, sir, oh, 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 gosh, no sign of Tom Ketch. We'll find him. We know he's looking for an abandoned gold mine somewhere in the northeast corner of this basin. Sheriff's posse on our trail. 
Me hear him. I know it, Toto. We've got to find Ketch before the posse finds us. Well, how can we find... The biggest thing in our favor, Dan, is the basin. Hoof marks are almost impossible to follow on this hard ground. You hear him? Yes, that's the posse, all right. That's our signal to get out of sight. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scott. Get up, boy. In the meantime, Tom Ketch had split open the beaded holster and belt and pieced the note together. Following the instructions, he had arrived at a small clearing a few hundred feet from the abandoned gold mine. There he dismounted and read the note again to be sure he had made no mistake. Mm, let's see. Go to the northeast corner of Sunburst Basin. There's an abandoned gold mine. Right by the tool shed, you'll find a scrub pine tree. Take a 45 and draw a bead between the window of the tool shed and the trees. If you shoot straight, you'll drill a hole in the wall of the shed that will show you the way to the gold. Signed, Flint Crawford. <laughs> that Crawford was a pretty slick hombre. <laughs> Somebody coming. It's that mask, critter, with the engine and the kid. Come on, horse. You and me will duck out of sight in one of these gullies. There's the mine and the tool shed. Uh, Ketch isn't here. Uh, I wonder if... Maybe he couldn't find the place. I doubt it, Dan. Tom Ketch worked this country as an outlaw, and he'd be able to find... Anything. Me. Even a middling critter like you. Ketch. Put up your hands and keep them there. So you were here ahead of us. This is the second time you've tried to grab something that belongs to me. You're talking about the gold that Flint Crawford buried up here. I think the express company has first claim to it. It's mine, and I'm taking it. Your hands up, all of you. There's a posse headed this way, Ketch. Posse hit. You're lying. The sheriff broke into the back room of the cafe just after you left. They're looking for the man who murdered Leif Keller. Looking for the... And they think it's you, don't they? <laughs> well, it's good. Maybe. Walk over here. And keep reaching. You make one move toward that hard way, I'll blast you. Now... Yeah, just take these two guns of yours and drop them. I'll feel better with them out of your reach. Yeah. Now, you're not going to be around very long, so you might as well know that I know who you are. Is that so? Sure. You're the Lone Ranger. You're the one who helped the lawman catch Flint Crawford. At least your facts are right. The only thing I can't figure out is why he turned soft and called you in to tell about that gold. What do you intend to do with this? First... Just so you'll know what you missed, I want you to read both pieces of Flint's note. Yeah. Go on, pick it up and read it. Hmm. Take a 45 and draw a bead between the window of the tool shed and the tree. If you shoot straight, you'll drill a hole that will show you the way to the gold. Same, Flint Crawford. <laughs> See what you missed out on? What do you need us for? I don't. So I'm going to march you right over to that ledge the other side of the shed. Then, as soon as I dig up the gold, I've got a lead slug for each one of you. All right. Keep your hands up and start walking. Move. Say, I know this place. I've been up here a lot of times. What's that, Dan? Oh, I didn't recognize it from the way we came up. Is it really an abandoned mine? Yes, but that tool shed he's talking Shut about... Shut up! Any chance of you hombres getting away, so stop talking about it. Keep moving. See? Look at it. It isn't an ordinary tool shed. The bottom part is made of stone. I see. Yes. Yes, I think I understand. What's that you're blabbing about? I think I understand now why Crawford wrote out those instructions and why he was so anxious for me to get the gold. Yeah? Well, thinking's all you're going to get out of it. All right, stop right here. There's something you should know, Ketch. Don't fire that gun, because if you do... Never you... mind the palaver. But I'm trying to help you. Shut I want... up or I'll drill you now. Now I'm going back and put a hole through that tool shed. But in the meantime, I've got you critters perched up here in plain sight. You make a move over here, I'll plug, you understand? Perfectly. And don't think you can run faster than I can shoot. I'll have my eye on you. Do you understand what I mean? Yes, I do, Dan. Look at Ketch. If he draws a bead on that shed while he's standing by the pine tree, he'll have to shoot down. Well, Hunter, not savvy. There isn't time to explain, Tonto. Just hug the ground. Look, he's going to shoot. Three men watched intently as Tom Ketch stood by the distant pine tree and leveled his gun according to the instructions of Flint Crawford's note. They noticed he was careful to keep one eye on them, although it wasn't necessary. They waited on the ledge and made no attempt to escape. Suddenly, as they watched, flames spat from Ketch's 45. Oh, what the 
Ben was right, Toto. That was a powder shed, not a tool shed. Come on. I'm glad our horses were far enough back to keep away from the blast. Yes. Look at this. Oh, that plenty big hole in ground. There must have been 200 pounds of blasting powder stored in the bottom of that shed. Oh, gee, we were really lucky. Suppose we'd got here first and fired that bullet instead of catch. We would have No, been... Dan, you'd have recognized the shed. Oh, look here. Side a hole. There's a big box oh, here. Bond with iron. Why, look... <laughs> Yes, it says Wells Fargo Express Company. And the stolen gold is probably inside. Why, then Flint Crawford did bury it here. Yes, Dan. And he planned that I would be the one to fire that bullet. Golly. Well, that sheriff's posse. They finally pick up trail. Shall we go? Just stay where you are, Dan. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, sir, Sheriff, the masked man, the engine, and the king. Put up your hands. It must have been them who set off the blast. You're wrong. The man who set off this blast is lying right over there against that rock. Dead. There is a critter over there, Sheriff. The same man who murdered Leif Keller last night, Tom Ketch. Tom Ketch? You don't mean the outlaw who escaped? Over and take a look. It's right, Sheriff. It is Ketch. And right beside that hole is a strong box stolen from the express company five years ago. Well, I'll be... Get my guns, Tato, and bring the horses. Uh, me get them. Ketch escaped from territorial prison three days ago, Sheriff. Will you write the warden and tell him what happened? Why, well, sure, but why... Our job is done. Thanks, Tato. Come on, Dan. Easy, big fella. Steady, boy. <laughs> Be ready. Now, will you take that gold back to Spearhead and turn it over to the express company? I'll take care of it. Come on, Silver. Get him up. Come up, boy. Are you letting them get away, Sheriff? Sure, I'm letting them get away. I thought I recognized that masked man, and I just remembered who he is. I'm Silver! Just Heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated, 